Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Nabijina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdillah, alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atamu taslim amma ba'd. All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. MashaAllah, we are in the last 10 nights of this blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to complete this blessed month of Ramadan, attaining His pleasure. And may He, the Almighty, also help us to attain Laylatul Qadr, otherwise known as the night of power and decree. Ameen. InshaAllah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on Al-Ihsan, otherwise translated as excellence and perfection Allahu Akbar this my dear brothers and sisters in Islam in other words Ihsan constitutes the highest form of Ibadah the highest form of worship once when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Medina a very strange and amazing unforgettable incident took place Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in a gathering. The Sahaba Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayhim Ajma'een were around him. And suddenly a stranger or a strange man approaches the gathering. A man who was wearing sparkling white clothes. A man who had jet black hair. A man whom signs of fatigue nor journey could be seen on him. He goes straight up to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He sits by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he asks Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a few questions. Number one being, tell me about Islam. O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell me about Islam. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clarifies about Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions the five pillars of Islam. And then he goes on to say, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni anil iman. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me about iman. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarifies about iman, i.e. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions the six articles of faith. For only if we inculcate those six articles of faith, will we be, will we be considered a mu'min. And then he goes on to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِحْسَانِ Allahu Akbar. Tell me about Ihsan. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives an amazing definition for Ihsan. But before we go into that definition, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what we need to understand is that in Islam, we have three ranks or three stages, primarily being Islam, and then Iman, and then Ihsan. Ihsan is the pinnacle, and that's why it is known as excellence, perfection, to do things of, with extreme beauty. It is just the pinnacle there. Islam is the first stage. Islam is the first stage. So the principle that we need to keep in mind is that every mu'min, every mu'min, now these three stages, like I said, Islam, Iman and Ihsan. You have a Muslim, you have a mu'min and you have a muhsin. So every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a mu'min. I hope I'm not confusing anybody. Every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a mu'min. Just as how we would say, Every crow is black, but not every black is a crow. Every crow is black, but not every black is a crow. Because we have black hair, black clothes. We wouldn't say every black is a crow. But every crow is inevitably black. You don't have red, yellow, purple crows. Every crow is black. Likewise, every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a mu'min. Why? Because we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stating in the Noble Quran where the Arabs The Arabs, they came and said that we have brought in Iman. 
O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell them lam tu'minu you haven't brought in iman walakin kulu aslamna but rather say you have submitted to the will of Allah you have become muslims so the first stage is islam you become a muslim and then you progress on to iman where you become a mu'min and then onwards is the final and pinnacle of all stages where you become a muhsin Allahu akbar now let's go to the definition of ihsan which was given to us by our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa now he states, Ihsan is an ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarang fa illam takun tarang fa inna hu yarak. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful explanation. An explanation which I fear time would not suffice for me to cover in its complete or entirety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states that Ihsan is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you do not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but know for a fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. Allahu Akbar. It is upon us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But a very important thing to be highlighted here is that when we reach that stage, it is important that we do not imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that we attribute a figure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a humanly form to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-iyadu billah, that is considered a sin. Eh? Because, laysa ka mithlihi shay, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in the Noble Quran, laysa ka mithlihi shay. There is nothing in comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing at all. So whatever comes to our minds, that is not the form of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we cannot attribute the form of a creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Almighty is far above that. But we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we are in the coat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with khushu' with khudu' and that is how we will make our ibadat all perfect and that is how we will reach excellence in our ibadah allahu akbar and know for a fact that even though you cannot see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verily allah the almighty sees you allahu akbar because the minute we inculcate this belief in our hearts my dear brothers and sisters in islam we will strive for excellence we will strive for perfection in our ibadah we will not peck like hens in salah because we want our salah to be perfect we will not compromise. We will want our salah to be excellent. When you take the Quran, we're not going to recite the Quran like a parrot. We're not going to pay lip service to the Quran. Nay, we will ponder on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will recite the Quran in beautiful melodious tones because we know we have inculcated in our hearts that Allah the Almighty is watching us. Allahu Akbar. We will strive for excellence, excellence upon excellence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to become from the Muhsinun, because my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sealed for the Muhsinun. Many a places in the Noble Quran, many a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Muhsinun. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsinin. In many other places. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the Muhsinun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people of Ihsan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people of Ihsan. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the minute we inculcate Ihsan and the minute we reach that rank, an aura of goodness surrounds us. Allahu Akbar. An aura of goodness will envelop us so much to the extent that the minute a person looks at you, because this is from the spiritual realm after all, not from the physical dunya, but rather the spiritual realm. The minute a person looks at you, he will be struck by the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be inspired and he will immediately remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is from the quality of Ihsan, Allahu Akbar. The minute we inculcate Ihsan, we will become so good that an aura of goodness will surround us. Let me share with you all a story. A story of Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah. Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah, he used to spend his nights in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for long hours. He did not restrict Qiyamul Layl only for the month of Ramadan. Nay, every night of his used to go in Qiyamul Layl. Perhaps one third of it he would spend in Qiyamul Layl 
worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is what is required from us. But we, weaklings, we have reserved it for the month of Ramadan. But nay, it has to become a habitual practice that we get up where our Salatul Tahajjud is also considered from Qiyamul Layl. So we can pray long prayers in the night, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst the rest of the creation is fast asleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to do so. So Malik ibn Dinar, he was in his house and he used to spend his nights in prayer. Now one night, there was a thief, a burglar, who scaled the wall of Malik ibn Dinar, his house, and he entered the house of Malik ibn Dinar. And now he starts looking around and he thinks that, you know, I've got into the house, now I can get something valuable from this house. He starts searching for valuables. But Malik ibn Adina, rahimahullah, who understood the true reality of dunya, he's not a person who's going to hold valuables and treasures in his house. There was nothing. There was nothing. The little utensils were the, which were there were all earthenware and cheap stuff. There was nothing valuable for the thief to steal from. Now he's looking around, the place is small. Malik ibn Adina, rahimahullah, he's in salah, and then he hears a noise. But then he he does not interrupt his salah. He finishes his salah and then he turns around. He turns around and the thief is there. He was caught red-handed. Now the minute Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah saw the thief, he asked him, what are you doing here, Ya Rajul? What are you doing here? To which he, the thief, he says, uh, you know, I came to rob from you, but there's nothing to rob from your house. The Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah, he states, oh, is that the case? Yeah, of course, there's nothing to rob from my house, but you're going through a lot of trouble. You climbed the wall and you jumped in. Come here, let me give you a cup of water. Why don't you refresh yourself and then leave? The thief, he was amazed. Look at the hospitality of Malik ibn Adina. So he drinks the cup of water and then Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah, he states, you know what, I'm going to pray two rakat of salah. Why don't you join me? And then afterwards you go about doing your business, i.e. robbing houses. You go around doing your business. So then he agrees because after all he's given him a cup of water. He was a good host. So he agrees. And they both pray together. They both pray two rakat together. And after the salah, Malik ibn Dina rahimahullah takes the Quran and starts to recite the Quran. Now the man, he thinks, you know, I waited all this while. Why don't I listen to a bit of the Quran and then I'll leave. He listens to the Quran, the recitation of Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah. The whole night goes and they hear the, the adhan for Salatul Fajr. Both of them were engrossed in the noble Quran, in the recitation of the noble Quran, Allahu Akbar. The minute the adhan went, this man he asks, Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah, can I accompany you to the masjid? To which Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah states, of course, why not? And then they both go to the masjid after, the, after Salatul Fajr. Now, he had a, a, a light meal too before because there was water and stuff like that, right? So after Salatul Fajr, the man says, I'm going to, uh, Malik ibn Dinar informs the man, I'm going to fast today, a nafil fast. I'm going to fast today, I'm going to fast. So if you're going to be with me any more, longer, you'll have to fast with me. So he agrees, okay, let me fast with you. Then they fast the whole day, doing good deeds, ibadat, until it becomes night again, and then they involve themselves in Qiyamul Layl. Day number one. Day number two, three, four, five, six, seven, he stays for one week. And then gradually he stays for almost a month. Allahu Akbar. One month he stays with Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah until finally he says after one month and after he has changed so much, he has turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tawbah and he's become a righteous person, a burglar, a thief. He now informs Malik ibn Adina rahimahullah. Oh, Shaykh, oh, Ustad, can I leave now? To which he says, uh, you, can, you could have left even the first day. You are the one who wanted to stay with me, so you have stayed. If you want, you can leave. To which he agrees, and then he leaves. Now comes the amazing part. He's going about with his usual chores, not robbing now. He's a good man. The next day, after a few days, he meets an associate of his, a known friend of his from the same trade, his former trade, robbing and stealing. Now, this associate, because just as how you have people of the same trade discussing about business, right? So how's your profit? How's things going on? This thief asks the former thief, you know, how's your you know, thieving career going on? Have you, you know, made the theft of that treasure you were always looking for? To which he states, Allahu Akbar, I went looking for a treasure, but Malik ibn Adina, rahimahullah, he stole my heart, Allahu Akbar. He stole my heart, and now I have completely devoted myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is that aura of goodness I'm talking about, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. The minute you reach Ihsan, 
people who come around you, they may be great sinners, Allahu Akbar, but the minute they come in touch with you due to your righteousness, due to your piety, and due to that excellence you pursue in your worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops you with goodness, so much to the extent that even that goodness affects people around you, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins, and may He the Almighty help us all to attain the great level of Ihsan. May He make us all from the Muhsinun, and may He accept our good deeds, and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah, just as how He united us here in this beautiful night with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And may He the Almighty help us all to attain the amazing Laylatul Qadr, the night of power and decree. Amin wa akhir da'wah. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Jazakum Allah. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links.